Um, once again, welcome everyone. I'm Steph E. This is Julie. Um, and you're at Ask Julie Anything May. Um, Julie and I were behind the scenes here a couple minutes ago and we were doing things a little bit differently this month. Um, Julie asked everyone their question beforehand. So I'm going to share in the, community. in the community. Yeah. So we have a Facebook community for anyone that is unaware. It's free to join, uh, totally supportive, like-minded pet parents like you. Um, we provide resources, suggestions. It's, it's a pretty cool spot to hang out. So I'm going to share the page so everyone can see it. And we're going to go through some of the questions that people asked pre-session. Okay, let me check out the chat here, Julie. Good, okay. bad, or ugly? That's the question while everyone joins. Good, bad, or ugly? What did your adored beast teach you today? Greetings from Vermont. Hey, Jim. Are you putting it in the chat? Are they putting it in the chat? I don't see anything quite yet, but I would love to because I'm sure they're hilarious. I'll tell you um, something good about me. I used all the veggies when I was cleaning out my fridge before the session. And anything that I didn't use for myself, the ends of the zucchini, the ends of the carrots, um, there was some cabbage there, cauliflower cores. I saute it up for Ted and I just mash oh. it into his meal and he loves it. Oh, that's good. So that's the good. There was nothing, nothing bad or ugly is coming to mind. Someone said the power of patience, the most de demanding basset on earth. <laughs> That's cute. Um, this person said, I didn't hear the question. The question was, um, what did your good, bad, or ugly, what did your adored beast teach you today? Patience. That's good. Most demanding basset. Hi, Christy. Hi, Robin. Okay, so why don't we get started? Oh, in case you have time. Oh, questions, questions. Okay, let's get started with the yeah. questions. Hey, Julie. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to share my screen, give you an inside peek at our Adored Beast community. If you're not a member already, please, by all means, join us. It's totally free to join. Um, let's get it rocking and rolling. <clears throat> and because... So, um... I think because there was so many that came in on the community, yeah. what, what Stephanie and I decided to do is kind of just go through them really super fast. So if people are on, um, the people that ask the questions, if they're actually on here, then they'll have a chance if we go through them quickly and then try and, and try and get to some more questions that people are asking. Oh, definitely. We, pardon? Definitely. Yeah, because then if we go through them quickly and sort of just sort of high level, mm -hmm. then we can get through them all and hopefully be able to answer um, more questions at the end. So, and, and we will, if, we, if I do this fast enough, then we definitely, definitely will. So the first person, Adam, had asked if it was normal for, or how he could prevent his dog. You guys can all read this. Um, so I'm not gonna read it again. Uh, is releasing his anal glands while relaxing. I don't know how old this dog is, but when they're a bit older, this can happen and it can be fairly normal if the sphincter of the anal gland is getting weaker. Um, as far as doing something with it, if, if, if everything else is good with him and he's getting a little bit of canned pumpkin with every meal, um, then I don't know why he gets canned pumpkin, maybe in order to help that, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but it's not that unusual. It, it can happen and it usually does happen when they get a little bit older. And sometimes they just do, they'll, they'll just be smelly and some dogs do have looser sphincters of their, of their anal glands. And then that can, that can happen. I wouldn't worry too much about it, um, but if, it, if he's older, then that could be, that could definitely be the reason. And maybe if his stool is um, um, also, uh, no, you know what? I honestly don't, I just think some, it's probably a normal thing for him unless it's unnormal, but maybe at the end, you could just let me know how old he is. Cause I kind of think it might be age related. Um, so a boxer with cardiomy cardiomyopathy, um, 
and also suffering with skin problems, but is also on a bunch of meds for the cardiomyopathy, which is understandable. When I, when I read this, um, oops, when I read this, then the first thing that I was actually looking at is the green tea, because sometimes when you said she's got a couple, had stomach issues in the last couple of months, the tannins, if you're actually feeding her green tea, sometimes I've seen, well, not sometimes, I've seen quite a few dogs not be able to tolerate green tea and it makes them feel nauseous because of the tannins. So that would be something that I might look at not giving her to her. And if you like the idea of green tea, actually put it on top of her, like topically instead of internally, because it can work really well that way as, as well. Um, when you talk about her skin problems and medication, Stephanie at the end of this is gonna put in something that we have called our relief uh, protocol, which, uh, which rotates through a few different things in the Adored Beast line. And we've put it um, together for animals that, have, that do have yeast and allergies. Because sometimes when you deal with the allergies, the yeast gets worse. Sometimes when you deal with the yeast, the allergies get worse. So we put together a little bit of a protocol and Steph will put it in, put it in at the bottom as well. Um, is rebalance her antivaccinosis useful for anything other than detox? Yes. And if you read the, the, I don't know if you've got, if you went out and purchased it or you're getting it in the leaky gut protocol, but often you'll see in the leaky gut protocol us saying if the symptoms get better and then start to decline again, that you can use the antivaccinosis again. It's really good for skin stuff. It, it, it's good for skin stuff. It can work really well with ear, with um, yucky ears, um, interdigital, interdigital cysts, because silica is in it. It helps to draw out things like, um, you know, uh, infection and pus and things that are in, in cysts, especially interdigital ones in between their, their, their pads. But also the Thuya is really good for yeasty stuff. So I like using antivaccinosis and your go-to when you have things that are sort of like brewing or um, using go-to and antivaccinosis for ear stuff is, is very helpful. So yes. And the other way you can look at that is, I don't know, do we have, a, do we have anything on our thing about silica and Thuya? I think we do, right? Each ingredient. On each and each ingredient. So when you read what the ingredients do, like thuya and silica from a homeopathic, you can collectively look at that as um, being useful for other things. Um, is yeast the only reason a dog skin can turn black? No, it isn't. Um, uh, it can also turn black if your dog is hypothyroid. So. I would check your dog for hypothyroidism. And the other times it can turn, um, uh, it can also go from black as if you've, if they've injured themselves from over itching, that can, that can help and have, that can happen as well. But if it's going back and forth, I'd probably take them to take your dog to the vets and have it. And no, don't just have a T4 TSH done, ask for a full thyroid panel and um, a full canine thyroid panel. And I, I really would suggest that. So Coco, do you want to go up a bit? Um, did a, a animal biome test, which is amazing. And um, I raw fed and, and what it found, and I'm just going to, I'm going to use this across the board because lots of the tests find higher and lower amounts of different bacteria. So the, what I would do personally is I would put, especially with the E. coli thing, but I would try the phytosflora because what we found in research with phytosflora, because we're using the, the actual canine species oriented probiotic made from dog feces, it tends to give the bacteria allow the diversity of the different bacteria to become more balanced. So if, if you're plant, let's say you're planting 
a garden and you're focused on one specific um, uh, back one, one specific flower, if you put too many of a different flower in to try and grow more of that flower or you put another flower in to try to decrease a different flower, what can happen is by decreasing that one, you can actually get too much of another one. So my, but you know, like I said, um, animal biome, they're amazing. My personal experience with working with this for a long time is to try and allow the gut to come back into homeostasis by giving it something very diverse and also something that is truly species oriented. So something that has come from a dog's gut and not a probiotic that's come from a different form of a different like species like a cow or even soil. So if you're really trying to, to, to bring that gut back into balance, that's what I would be recommending. And the other thing is turkey tail. Um, turkey tail is really, really good for the gut to help to help grow friendly bacteria. So those would be the two things that I would definitely, uh, so is phytosynergy. Phytosynergy is really, really good as well for, for the promotion of healthy gut bacteria. And it's almost like the gut knows what bacteria it needs to grow. It just needs the tools to be able to grow it. Um, so Vicky, uh, her dog had a CCL and is on NSAIDs and drugs and what would, she's asking, what would I recommend to support her when she's finished the drugs? We just wrote an article on that. So um, Steph's going to put it in the chat at the end. But what I wanted to say is I wouldn't wait. That's the big thing I wanted to say. Because with these kinds of surgeries, we have to be careful that we're supporting the opposing leg right from the very, very, very get-go, right? Because oftentimes the other leg can become compromised, especially when it's just being like, I, I don't know what percentage it is, but it's scary huge, like 60% or 75% of the other, the other opposing um, uh, ligament will, will, will also go. So in that intense first stage, it's important to start your your support right away um, especially if you know that this, the support that you're going to be give, giving doesn't interfere with antibiotics and and gabapentin and, and NSAID so for this I would definitely be doing the um, jump for joints like a hundred percent in our potency and I would also um, I would also do phytosynergy because phytosynergy, the one specific phytoplankton species in that has been very well researched for um, muscle uh, uh, rehabilitation. So it's really, really good for injured muscles. And as we all know, you have to cut right straight through that. So those would be the three things that I would be doing. Uh, phytosflora, because of the antibiotics, jump for joints to try to support the healthy ligaments and um, tissue and uh, phytosynergy. Those, those would be the three that I would try and I would do them right now. I wouldn't worry about um, the, the, the drugs that, that your dog is on. Um, Sandy wants to know if you can put jump for joints in a full meal. It's not ideal, but you can. Uh, I would recommend to put a little bit extra and not to mix it in and put it right at the very top so that as soon as your dog goes to eat it, the homeopathic remedy touches the mucosal lining of his mouth in, in gums. So yes, if that's the only way you can get it in, don't worry, yes, you can, but put it on the very, very top. Is it possible for a dog not to do well on a raw diet? Um, this is, yeah, this is, whoa, where are we here? Okay, uh, sorry, I'm like, whoa. Sorry. Uh, uh, it's okay. Um, and I transitioned my dog to a raw diet two years ago, then she's only gain, gaining more and more weight. I've cut back on the amounts to the point of thinking I'm starving her. She's also never had 
season allergies like this before there is no itching rather lots of drainage from her nose this is not an issue when she was on kibble and now there was the weight gain so again that's really there's a lot there are dogs that don't do well on raw diets but most of the time if they're not doing on raw on um well it's a gi thing i would be seriously worried that if she's gaining weight on on a raw diet that there's something going on with her thyroid so i would 100 percent recommend um uh finding out what her thyroid's doing and again do a canine thyroid panel like the whole panel because this could be definitely something thyroid related because usually they lose weight on raw this is something completely opposite of what i normally hear which is you know, I'm, I'm giving my dog X amount of grams of, of raw and there, and she's getting skinny, but it's at the amount that she is supposed to be having. And, and that's more often the case than what you're saying. And the reason is, is because it's so well assimilated and it's not, um, so it's, it's utilized in energy really fast. So I, I would definitely uh, get her thyroid checked. Julie, uh, but, yeah. Melissa's here in the chat. She had a thyroid test done. Could you repeat again what she should ask for, please? A full thyroid panel. So that is a T4, a T3, a free T4, a free T3, and a TSH, and also a thyroid antibody. So it's a full thyroid panel. I don't know whether you're in the U.S., but sometimes a T4 and a TSH is really not useful at all. And that's normally what they do check for. So I would be definitely looking at, um, uh, looking at getting um, a, a proper thyroid panel done if you haven't. She said, thank you so much. I just wrote that down quick while you mentioned it. Okay, great. Uh, what's the best homeopathic remedy for a cat having hair balls? We just did a blog on that. So Steph's going to put that in the bottom for you um, once we, once she stops sharing her screen, Robin. But, you know, when we were talking about um, anti-vaccinosis, anti-vaccinosis can be really helpful too for helping the, the cat get rid of it. But homeopathics are, are great, but, you know, brushing them, making sure that you're taking all the extra hair off and also making sure that the stomach acidity is where it's supposed to be for a cat. So you want to try and make sure that you're feeding a diet that supports the, the, the correct stomach acid, which will help to break down um, the fur ball when, the, when, they're, when they're ingesting fur. Um, our rescue has been dealing with acid reflux. Okay, <clears throat> this is a long one. Um, acid reflux and IBS symptoms. Um, you're cooking simple chicken and rice with products with Hillary's blend. Um, the vet also prescribed a kibble that can help calm his belly. So I looked a lot at this, cod liver oil, gut soothe probiotic and liver tonic. So the gut soothe is a really, really good one. And so is liver tonic. Um, he has had to use um, uh, sulcrate and antibiotics and um, for his diarrhea. Now, I just did a, um, hold on, our greatest concern is how can we better manage the flare-ups generally happens every 10 days or so. Sometimes we think definitely, definitely can be a trigger and with stress for sure. Um, we all want to establish a healthier, more balanced food option. We think maybe doing a raw food, but yeah, definitely don't jump into raw food. Like I'm a raw food advocate. I was using it in my clinic in 1994, but I wouldn't jump into the raw food. I would actually, for this, I would contact someone that, uh, more of a nutritionist for this, like Sarah, the, the, maybe you could put Sarah's email yeah. address in there. Um, I know chicken and rice is what everybody goes to and Hillary's blend. I mean, she did an amazing job when she first came out and I think, I think it's great. My concern sometimes with that is it's great, but if you could find something 
that didn't have um, synthetic vitamins and minerals would be really helpful. But even the fact that your vet's allowing you to do Hillary's Blend in a cooked product, then kudos with your vet. But there's, you might want to get off chicken. Like, I don't know, like maybe he's got a chicken sensitivity. You might want to try something really bland and really low fat, um, like, like a buffalo and then, and then really, um, you know, pat out the fat, take the fat out. And instead of using rice, maybe something more, Sarah will help you with doing, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, doing something uh, maybe more in the squash family so that you're not adding um, um, sugars to his food, which is what rice will. Cod liver oil, I would probably look at more something that is plant-based because cod can, cod is, is you know, the go-to, but when you're looking at heavy metals that are in fish oil, which is almost all of them, um, you, you have to be just really super careful about cleaner the better so the the cleaner that you can feed your dog the absolute better so if you can get real vitamins and minerals rather than synthetic if you can get um an omega-3 that has that we know that you know for sure doesn't have any kind of heavy metals from the ocean that's really good but saying all of this what i really got to say to you is again andrea ring um I have at our clinic, we saw, I would say in the thousands of acid reflux and IBD dogs. And there were not very many that we couldn't help. And, and some of these were on like massive amounts of steroids because they were getting really bad and not being able to absorb their food. And once you get them to a certain place, I would definitely do the full leaky gut protocol but I wouldn't, I would wait on the healthy gut and do the healthy gut later on. So um, you don't want to be able to, you don't want them to absorb their food instantaneously, um, initially. And I, my personal experience is that acid reflux and IBD um, stem from leaky gut. So Again, if you reached out to Dr. Judy Morgan, she had me on as a, as a guest speaker last week. Last week. Um, and we did a, over an hour of talking about um, managing, managing IBD. Mm -hmm. And if you really can get on it, it it's, it's not, in my experience, with a really good homeopath and the proper diet and the proper supplements it's it it you've got you know there's there's huge hope for your dog having a completely you know pretty much a normal life and not I'll, having not having this i'll put andrea's contact in the um chat as well as, as sarah's too yeah i wrote that <clears throat> yeah. down i've got a little list going here okay so uh, Phoebe's question, I use both leaky gut and UCB's protocol for my 90 pound German Shepherd. He seems to be doing great on. Now on gets through the phytos flora. What would be a good combo routine to get him on with specific product recommendations? Um, he needs probiotics daily. Okay, so what you're doing is really good um, by having him on gut soothe and phytos flora, but you can also, um, what I would recommend for a, a, a healthy long-term um, routine would be to add in there one of the, definitely one of the um, uh, uh, probiotic or one of the turf, like, oh my God, one of the medicinal mushrooms. And I'm just trying to do this so fast. This is, uh, my tongue is like, tripping over itself. Um, I would do one of the medicinal mushrooms, probably turkey tail because it's got such an affinity for the gut. And then I would do phytos flora. So for anybody out there wondering when I, when I talk about phytos flora, uh, for the animal that has the, the IBD, it, the great thing is that nobody, not your vet, nobody really knows how your animal is absorbing its food. So whether 
it's getting 100% of its nutrition, whether it's getting 30% of its nutrition, when it's got IB, when they have IBD, acid reflux, and uh, leaky gut, anything like that, chances are they have a very low nutrient absorption rate. So the great thing about Phyto's flora, especially when he, a German shepherd, we want to watch things that will be immune uh, mediated. Like we want to try and find things that are really good for immune mediation. So you've already got them on two, two things that help with immune mediation. Phyto's flora is a, a, an immune mediation means if it goes too high, it brings it down. If it goes too low, it brings it up. So when we put an animal on steroids, we're suppressing its immune system because its immune system is too high. If we want to increase its immune system, if the immune system is too low, we bring it up, but then for animals that have um, uh, autoimmune diseases, that's not a good idea because that's exactly what we don't want to do. So the body can naturally bring itself back into homeostasis with um, immune modulators. So oftentimes, so um, in what you're doing, German shepherds do have a tendency to have immune uh, related autoimmune related diseases as they get older. So I would be definitely doing something with the larch in it, which has got soothe and, and phytos flora both have larch. When phytos flora bacteria has a specific immune modulation effect, which is awesome. And then turkey tail is also immune modulator, but phytosynergy really, really helps to ensure that they're getting their sort of micronutrients, amino acid profiles, and um, specific whole food nutrition because it absorbs into their mucous membrane. It doesn't have to go into the stomach to absorb. So its bioavailability is, is fantastic. I don't really know another product out there with anything that has that kind of bioavailability. Um, so my dog's thyroid panel from Homeopet, who's like the best, anyone watching this, as far as checking your thyroid levels with your animals, Gene Dodds with Homeopet is probably the, 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 um, the highest standards of who you can send them to. Um, so it's T3 and T3, free T3 is a little low. They said not thyroidal. What should I test for or look into? Well, um, you don't, if that came back from a uh, hemopet, I don't know, Gail, what your dog's symptoms were, but I would be looking at f food in this case. And I would be looking at finding, we know, we know that in the gut, the gut specific pro specific bacteria in the gut are, um, have an affinity with different parts of the body. So we know that there's certain bacteria that has an affinity with the brain, gut brain access. We know some have an affinity with the kidneys. We know that some have an affin affinity with weight gain. There's just so many things that we're, we're learning more and more about bacteria that different species of bacteria have stronger effects on certain things. So right away, when I see a low thyroid, I wonder if the gut brain access is as efficient as it needs to be. So I would be looking at giving your dog phyto, phytosynergy. And I would be looking at also, not phytosynergy, sorry, phytosflora. And I would also be looking at foods that support the thyroid. So, you know, glandulars with thyroid in it that aren't therapeutic levels to increase the thyroid. Um, just, to, just to make sure that you're balancing it and watching their uh, immune system in general, because if she doesn't think it's thyroidal, that could be markers that there's something else going on. Again, I don't know what your dog's symptoms are, but something else that could be going on immune wise. And for me, I would just be watching to be sure that it wasn't um, leaning towards immune mediated diseases. So autoimmune disease and the, and the best way to, to try and derail autoimmune disease 
is by um, um, giving immune modulators, which is what I was just talking about before. So I'm in, uh, and Alan have almost seven year old who's only ever had his puppy vaccines. I use no chemical, oopsie, wow, okay. Um, I use several oh Adore Beast products, including pre-bio, pre and daily pre my home cooked and nutritionally balanced food for him. I grow many of my own veggies. That's great. Buy local, perfect. That's aw great, awful. Most of the time, treats are freeze dried. October, I had a, he a human titer done for Parvo in December. Both showed very good titers. Awesome. Vet did an IDEX titer and the results were good tempered, but no immunity to Parvo. My vet thought it was strange and contacted Isaac to confirm it wasn't mistake and they said it was accurate we can't as we can't just get a simple parvo booster here only combo combos i opted to wait for another hemo pet clinic before making that's that's okay so 2021 hip tighter showed adequate level parvo and very good yeah that's what i was gonna say am i correct that he doesn't need a combo booster so in 2021 hemo pet tighter showed adequate level parvo and very good level. I would say you're correct in that. Um, should I be concerned about his parvo level, particularly because the Aladex showed no immunity and hemopit showed adequate? So they're different tests. Um, I again, Gene Dodd is Gene Dodds is a brilliant, brilliant when it comes to uh, the like the immune system and brilliant when it comes to the thyroid. I would trust her to the moon and back. So what she's saying is I is what I would go with. And what I, should I get another titer a year from the last one or is it safe to go longer? I'm at the mercy of the organizer who schedules the Hemopet um, clinic. Is there a dispense, discrepancy between IDEX and Hemopet in general? In your experience is one more accurate. So they read them differently. Hemopet has been someone that's been doing this for a really long time they read them differently and what you really really have to understand is that there is memory cell so what we see on a on a sheet of paper is not all of the ways that we can test for titers so in my experience of using dr dodds in my clinic where i think we were the first life, first clinic in canada to ever even use her and um, interestingly enough, IDEX used to be called, um, was a different lab in Vancouver and Dr. Uh, David Roosh, myself and Dr. Sally Lester, which was one of the scientists there, we actually started the, the we got the first titer tests actually going in, in, in Canada. So, saying all of that, I would trust Hemopet completely. And if it was my dog, I can't tell you what to do, but if it was my dog and I had adequate levels of parvo and really good levels of distemper, I wouldn't redo them. And I would just wait for um, the next Hemopet and do it again. And you could also reach out to Hemopet and see if they can give you any more information on this but try and remember what we see through blood on a on a on a piece of paper is not all of the ways that we can measure titers so not measure but where the titers are and there is something called um immunity in memory cell which is not not you're not able to look at that on paper so Yes, that's, that's, it's seven years old and, um, um, you know, I, I, I would agree with you, but if you want, and I, and I fully trust Hemopet, if that's what you're asking me, a hundred percent. So you could reach out to them directly and basically give them this exact same thing that you've just written and see if, if you get anything back from them. But um, I would wait for another you know, you're in, you did it in 2021, you're one year. So I would wait that, definitely wait that one year and, and do it again. Okay. Thanks, Julie, Julie I wonder if we should move to um, Q&A in the call for a few minutes and see where we're at. Well, we're almost done, aren't we? 
Oh, yeah. Well, well let's just real fast. Okay, hold on. Um, is the live tomorrow? Okay. Dogs on general clue diet with grass fed protein, bone meal, and vegetables. The fighter sooner chicken dead green with muscle sardines and potency goes well. What does that say? See more info. Um, okay, healthy get rotated with fighters for all I need an additional. She needs an additional multivitamin and mineral mix. Is that what she's asking? She talks in the If that's what you're asking, if you need one or do you need one, um, it sounds like you've got a really good, good mix there for sure. And um, if you are looking, Dr. Tobias has, um, Peter Tobias, he's got a really good multivitamin mineral mix. You could, you could, um, uh, you could add that to that without worrying because it's a, it's a whole food one. So I wouldn't be worried about it. You could do that if you wanted, or you could rotate it in, you know, do it three days a week if that's what you wanted, but it sounds like a really good diet. And if your dog is doing well, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, if giving the easy peasy maintenance, can you also give cranberry pills? So Diane, if you want to move it up, Steph. Um, oh, Diane. Yeah. yeah. Um, giving the easy peasy maintenance, can you also give cranberry pills? I don't think you'd need to unless you really, really have a problem with a dog that has a very, very high pH in their urine. If you have a dog that has a really high pH, you know, you can give extra cranberry, but I don't think you would have to worry about, about it, to be honest with you. You can always, the best way to do this, Diane, is just go to your regular um, drugstore and buy some, um, some lipid just just the tests so you can just buy a ph stick and you can just test the ph when when your dog once a week just get a little cup and test the ph and it'll tell you where it's at and then nice. you can either increase it from a maintenance dose to a to more of a therapeutic dose or you can give extra cranberry pills whatever whatever you feel comfortable doing um a mucous cell plan to monitor not causing discomfort at this time thoughts and supportive treatments and also what can we do to support okay so diane knight i would be in something like this i would be contacting andrea for sure right. enter put him right away on turkey tail um and um phyto turkey tail phyto synergy and phytos flora would be the three things that I would give him right away, but you can do homeopathic remedies to really, really support that. Um, okay. All right. Hey, that was good. That was like a speed round, eh, Julie? I know. Do you need a drink of water? <laughs> I do. <laughs> that Sorry, was like a rapid fire. Thank you. Hey, thanks to everyone that submitted a question too. That was, that was fun. It was cool to kind of switch it up and do things a little bit differently than we typically do. All right, I'm gonna get the, the Q&A going here for you, Julie. First thing, I'm wondering what protocols you recommend for humans with potentially leaky gut. So I'm just gonna say this really fast. We're not supposed to, but I'm gonna tell you what I take, <laughs> um, which is, which is I've, I've done the full leaky gut protocol. And I've also, I take every single day, I take Phytosynergy and Liver Tonic and um, Gut Sooth every single day and I'm taking our potency now. So that's what, that's what I do. Um, I read on a slippery elm could interfere with nutrient absorption. I was feeding a product with my boys home preparing them with a bunch of supplements and I got very worried. So I stopped the slippery elm. It says to add gut sooth to food. So I was wondering if you could speak to that. My boy has my, mitral valve and collapsed in trachea and recently started on vet med. And I'm also currently giving liver tonic, healthy gut photosynergy and turkey tail. So that's something that everybody, this is a really good question. And I'm really glad that you asked this question actually, Fran. So we, when I formulate the, the products for, for Adored Beast, I've never been a super sizer. I've always been very much, um, I, I really uh, subscribe to the, to the philosophy that especially with natural medicine, that there's a synergistic nature. So when 
um, when I did Gut Soothe, the, the, the amount of everything that's in Gut Soothe are not super high. They're definitely not scary high. They're in a, on a level that I feel very comfortable um, taking it every, myself taking it every day. Uh, giving it to my horses every day, giving it to one of my dogs that I have every single day. So I actually, he gets it three times a day because he's got acid reflux um, and I don't worry about it at all. So um, adding extra slippery elm may not be a good idea to add a, more slippery elm on top of it. But when you're looking at what's wrong, which is mitral valve and collapsing trachea, the, 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 the puff, just in my opinion, the positive attributes to calming any kind of irritation down with the trachea, supporting the smoothness, supporting the, the, the muscles are, um, are outweigh the concern of the small amount of slippery elm in there. The other thing I was going to say is you're giving her liver tonic or him liver tonic, sorry, um, a healthy gut, which is good, phytosynergy and turkey tail. What I might do instead of healthy gut is I would maybe alternate. I would be giving gut soothe, liver tonic, phytos flora, um, phytosynergy for sure and turkey tail. And you may want to increase his phytosynergy because again, the, the specific, one of the specific strains of phytoplankton in phytosynergy is phenomenal for muscle health and amino acid, which is really, really important for the heart. I don't see here that he's on any kind of um, omega-3s but I would, I would look at, at, at adding the potency to, to, that, to that routine. And um, healthy gut is great. It's really, it is really good. But what I would be, what you wanna be careful of with collapsing tracheas is that there's no, that we're really soothing everything. And healthy gut is really incredible to help break down the food so that the absorption is really good. But you want to make sure that nothing is very, um, I wouldn't be giving anything with a collapsing trachea, uh, something that has, um, I don't even know. I, sometimes if you, if you were to taste, if you were to taste healthy gut, you, you'll know what I'm saying. There's almost like a spiciness to it, or um, and that's the that's the enzymes. So just be careful with healthy gut. Maybe take him off of healthy gut for a little bit and and give him uh, Phytos Flora instead, and then see see how he's doing. But things that are trachea, what I would be doing is feeding him trachea. I would be getting uh, I would be getting trachea, feeding him trachea. I would be making sure that when he's eating, that he's not eating like dry food, anything that's going to, because as they swallow, it's, they're so close together. You want to be keeping that very um, non-irritated. So definitely shouldn't be wearing a collar, should be wearing a harness, but I'm sure you know all of that. And um, there's really, there's some really good remedies, also really good remedies for that. If you if you um, like our gut seal, but that's the leaky gut protocol, but, but things like collagen and things that have um, an affinity with strengthening the, the muscles in the, the, the nervous system within actually within the, the smooth muscle. So there's, there's homeopathic remedies called Cossicum, there's homeopathic remedies, conium. There's 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 different homeopathic remedies that have affinity to collapsing tracheas. And Stephanie did put Andrea Ring's um, email in, uh, in contact information. And I would I would contact her and talk to her about this because you could be you could be giving some extra stuff here homeopathically. You could also, if you if you can't afford to call Andrea or you're not feeling comfortable, you could also try our go-to remedy and giving that to him 
starting them on it maybe um, three times a day for three days and then twice a day for a week and see if you notice a difference in his coughing. So that, that's the other thing you could try. So uh, Christy, uh, if you get two more questions, my 12 year old Havanese will no longer sleep through the night. Steph, oh, never mind. Um, sleep through the night. She will wake me up at 2 and 4 a.m. at minimum for no apparent reason. Any ideas to help? Yes. Um, I don't know no. if, it, if, if your dog doesn't have to go out and go to the bathroom. If your dog is panting a lot and waking up and pacing, that could, you might want to check the blood, it's blood work. And if it's liver enzymes are high, you could ask maybe your vet to look at exploring Cushing's. Um, if she's drinking more or peeing more or anything like that, sometimes Cushing's they'll wake up in the, around that two and 4 a.m. thing. Um, I've seen that, or if she wakes up and she's panting a lot, some Another thing that can sometimes happen is cognitive disorder. So um, sort of like like a, like a dementia, um, you know, just, just geriatric cognitive disorder. And what's really, really good for that is, um, is lion's mane uh, uh, mushrooms. We're, we're going to be coming out with that soon. But you can get lion mane's mushroom, that, or lion's mane mushrooms. That's very good for brain health. And so is our potency. Potency is really, really, DHA is amazing for, for brain health. So I would be looking at, at, um, at getting some a full blood work done and seeing what's going on. And also, um, and if it is Cushing's, there, I, I, if they, if the, if the liver enzymes are high or the vet is feeling like it might be Cushing's, then stand back and decide how you want to approach that because there is an incredible homeopathic protocol for Cushing's that Andrea did that we did at our clinic that if it's not really bad and it's sort of early stages, you actually don't have to go through the full sort of invasive testing for Cushing's. You can actually put them on the homeopathic protocol and see how they do and then see if their liver enzymes start to come down. But if they feel like that might be it, um, you might wanna you might wanna contact Andrea. But I would look at blood work and also um, if the blood work looks good, think about maybe some geriatric cognitive disorders and um, get them on some, get your, get your dog on, um, on some lion's mane and um, uh, some of our potencies because it's, it's got a really good amount of DHA in it. But definitely go to the vet and, and check things out first. Okay, Steph. Okay, hey, yeah, I'm all caught up now. Okay. Is, is there more down? Oh, yeah. Okay, do you want to go down then? Can you see when I scroll? Oh, no, it's stuck on Christy. Christy. You might have to scroll there from your side. All right. Uh, I see Sonia here. Okay, yeah, I can. Yeah? Yep. So 9 have 12 uh, Beagle Mix, who has two heat cycles, who has had two heat cycles. I, seven months apart with blood appearing first January 20th. She had clear vaginal discharge at the vet exam and said she was in her heat cycle. Seven months later, no discharge noticed and no blood. Is there such a thing as silent heat? Can acupuncture help stimulate her hormones to work? What are signs of pyometra? In a spay, the answer in an old dog. Oh boy. Um, Chihuahua Beagle. So last had a clear vaginal discharge at the vet exam and said it was, was her heat cycle. Seven months later, no discharge noticed and no blood. I'm confused. Um, she had a clear discharge and then seven months later, there was no discharge and no blood. So I'm just wondering why. Um, Sonia, the mic here real quick. Okay, I'm a little confused. Oh, shh. Okay, I just lost her. Gosh, you know what? I think Sonia just dropped off the call, unless I'm missing something here. 
Okay, let's move on, Julie. I'm sorry. I think she might have just dropped off. Okay. Um, okay, Jennifer, how often can the anal gland treatment be repeated? The hepersulf, arnica, aconite, and silica, etc. Well, it can be it can be repeated often, but if it's not, if, if it continues to happen, then I think you really need to start looking at um, diet as well. I don't know if diet, if you've, if you've done, if you've done something diet wise with, with making sure that the anal glands are, are, are functioning as best as they can. Um, oh, that she gets lots of low glycemic, oh. Veggies, dehydrated rabbit feed and fur. Uh, where is that? Oh, how come I can't find, oh yeah, here we go. Low, Dehydrated rabbit feet and fur. Does she, what kind of dog is it? Hold on, let me look again. It doesn't say. Mm. Um, have you tried, have you tried a mix of, um, um, dog or soft, okay, soft bones like necks? I find necks are like just so brilliant for, for anal glands, like really brilliant for anal glands. And sometimes, like a like a good veg and and the you don't want to you don't the poop getting too hard but the nice thing about chicken necks or or turkey necks if they can have poultry um is that the 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 bones get really lumpy it doesn't make the whole stool rock hard which is what you don't you don't want that but it makes it lumpy and the lumpier it is, the more it pushes and then releases and pushes and releases almost like a massage of the, of the anal glands. So I would definitely, she gets turkey necks all the time. I think that's what she just said, didn't she? Um, Steph, did she just say that? All the time. I'm beginning to think it's something else entirely. Perhaps olive leaf can be used as a topical application for possible yeast around the anus. Yeah, well, sometimes it can, sometimes it can be allergies, right? And you also wanna make sure that it's not, if it's one side and not the other, that it's not like a adenosarc, like a, like a sarcoma, like a tumor or something that's, that's also there. So you might have to get like a smear done or something to be sure that there's nothing else going on there besides um, besides the, the anal gland, right? So <clears throat> make sure your vet is, is, um, uh, taking a look at it to be sure that it is just an impacted anal gland and not like, a, a an anal, an anal gland tumor. Cause sometimes that can happen, yeah. especially if it's been, if it's been expressed a lot by a, by a breeder or by a, um, uh, not a breeder, but a, a, a groomer or by a, um, sorry, um, or by a, a vet, you know, or a tech or whatever that if it's if sometimes the more, the more trauma that happens to the gland, they can, um, they can, you know, they can get, they can get tumors from that. So I would have it checked out. Thanks, Julie. Um, I just heard from Sonia here. Sorry about that, Sonia. She has been here since the get-go. Uh, she just left us more info in the Q&A. Let me, she's here. Okay, after the clear vaginal discharge in January, 2021, there was no indication of any heat cycle during the rest of the year. She usually has a heat cycle every seven months. And back to her original question here to refresh our memory, nine yeah. and a half Chihuahua Beagle mix, mm -hmm. two heat cycles a year, seven months apart. Uh, is there such a thing as if, a silent heat? Can acupuncture help stimulate her hormones to work? What are the signs of pyometra? Well, if it's if it's, if it's pyometra, they get really sick. And a, a closed pyometra, if it was an open pyometra, you would be seeing discharge. Um, closed pyometras are really dangerous because they can get really sick really, really fast. So you would notice you would you should you should be noticing that she's not eating or she's vomiting or there's some kind of signs, and 
you know, you can just, she's in, she's intact. You could get her hormones checked. You could get a blood sample to have her hormones checked to see if she is, you know, maybe something else is going on and she's actually not, um, not having regular heat cycles. So, you know, you do have to watch for pyometra. My dog, my dog went through a terrible, terrible pyometra, almost died. And, you know, here I am. Well, it doesn't matter. She, I thought she had a pyometra and they thought she had a, a, a tumor. Um, and turns out it, it didn't, and anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, she, I wanted her to have surgery and they didn't want to do surgery because they didn't think it was a pyometra and then it turned out it was. And then she, by the time they, we got her into surgery, she, she, she did almost die. So it isn't something you want to fool around with. That's for sure. And if you really want, just give your vet a call and say, could you have a referral done to a, um, a reproductive vet, a, de- a vet that does just reproduction and, um, and they'd be able to tell you whether she's coming in heat or she's not coming in heat. That's what I would be doing. I wouldn't be guessing or, or trying to figure it out. I would just probably ask for a referral and take her in and see what's, what's truly going on an interesting one from Nadia. Um, A chihuahua, three years old, male, neutered on March 25th, vaccinated and house trained. He's great. He's healthy, uh, good appetite, energetic. He pees out a clear, odorless, extremely large amount every hour or so. Uh, Often he can't even make it to his pee pad or outside. It does depend on the weather. It, It does not depend on the weather or food. He eats fresh. Uh, the episodes happen about every other day, only in the second part of the day or the evening. They last for a few days, and then the next day he's back to normal. Um, he does drink more during the episodes. He's not urinating really in the mornings. He has no interest in water. He starts with this excessive peeing, usually after 4 p.m. Labs came back clear. Uh, checked for UTI and diabetes. They did all the labs you recommend, Julie. The vet thinks it might be hormonal slash after the neuter, but would would it not be happening at all the time? And he still did have these episodes before his neuter. Wow. Oh, here's a little bit more. Tried Bach Rescue Remedy, homeopathics with no change. There is a, there is an idiopathic diabetes. So, or idiopathic, um, is it, where's my phone? Let me just see. Is it idiopathic? I'm just, I think I remember something like this at my clinic a long time ago. Um, Sorry, guys. Hang on. I, I just did a quick search here, Julie. Diabetes insipidus. So rare disorder without identified etiology. I would um, I would get him checked for for CDI. It's called so idiopathic central diabetes insipidus and uh, chemical called yeah, which is also known as an and antidiuretic hormone. That's what I would do. I would, I would have them checked out for that. You there? Um, I, yes. So, and I think it's, I think it's, um, it's very important to do that because, uh, we, I remember this dog. I, yeah, I remember a dog in my clinic that had this and we we treated it constitutionally so with very very specific to his constitution and the dog did amazing Hmm. did did absolutely amazing that's funny that it just came right popped in your head immediately it was probably 20 years ago but Yeah. yeah that's that sounds very very much like that 
and it and it and it's tested in a different way. I think they'd have to do a water, it's kind of yucky. I think they have to do a water deprivation test along with some other tests, but it would be worth finding out if it's that so that you can you can deal sure. with it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think we've got time for one more quickie here. Okay. Ellen. Oh, Julie, this one's right up your alley. Your girl's constant skin infections. Do a lot of natural supplements, allopathic topicals. Some someone we're getting natural medicine guidance on said that even though he doesn't like Cytopoint, it's better than more antibiotics. I don't trust the clinical trial data used to support Cytopoint safety. Good for you for doing your research, but I also can't keep giving antibiotics. What are your thoughts on Cytopoint while working to balance her system naturally? Is there anything that could be done to mitigate damage? Should we avoid Cytopoint, Cytopoint like the plague? Um, her skin is warm and painful to touch. Uh, three and a half year old pity. And and has she done the leaky gut protocol with her with antivax? I don't see that here yet. Uh, it looks like the problems kind of stemmed from from her vaccinations. Uh, Ellen, so, are you here. Um, I would be. I would be. I would be contacting Andrea for this because it looks like <clears throat> like she gets skin infections right so mm -hmm. so is the skin are the skin infections secondary to a allergy or secondary to you know leaky gut or or what what why is she getting skin infections so you know again you know how i talk about immune modulation so mm -hmm. so they're giving the, they're giving the, I don't know why she's getting the, the skin infections. Like if she's got an underlying skin disease that then she's getting secondary staphylococcus or whatever, but I would be looking at working with a really, really good homeopath with this and making sure that you're using immune modulators. But in this case, there are some, and I'm not telling you that it, 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 is gonna help with this, but we can we've used some pretty amazing homeopathic remedies that work very similar to antibiotics. Mm. So um, without the side effect, and if you're using that many antibiotics, I hope you're using Phytos Flora because it's it's the one that has the specific bacteria that is um, doesn't have the antibiotic resistance, right? So. I would be definitely using Phytos Flora. I would definitely be using, again, probably Turkey Tail, um, Phyto Synergy, and then contacting a, home, a really, really good homeopath that can walk you through and send you remedies to try and reduce the, the, the try and reduce your, your, the constant, antibiotics because mm -hmm. um in my experience infections skin infections are easier to deal with believe it or not with homeopathic remedies than having to use immune suppressive drugs like like um if, if the antibiotics work there is a lot of hope because so often the antibiotics don't work even for the short period of time. They're just, um, they don't work because they need immune suppressants. So I would, before I would start using a bunch of other drugs, I would try really hard to, to give maybe Andrea a call and um, or a, see if you can get an appointment and then uh, you may have to wind up giving the antibiotics, but then giving the homeopathic, like another course of antibiotics, but then giving the homeopathic remedies during the antibiotics, which is what you can do so that you're, you're dealing with like a, a, a horrible skin infection right now, but then you're putting the homeopathics on board. And like I said, the phytosphore and stuff like that. Um, so that hopefully she won't need antibiotics again. So, and if she gets another flare up, if you catch it really, really fast, 
then you could probably put the those remedies back on board before she needs antibiotics again. So that's that's what I would try. Definitely, because if you start using heavier duty drugs, my concern would I'm not I'm not disagreeing with what this person is saying, but I would be worried that you're going to wind up then having to use heavier and heavier drugs, like more and more immune suppressive drugs and things like that. Um, Julie, you said something that could help a lot of pet parents there, and it's about the phytos flora and the ability to use it while your animal is taking antibiotics. Could you just say that one yeah, more and, time? Well, a lot of probiotics don't have uh, the ability to be antibiotic resistance, like the, to, to have antibiotic resistance. So you just, you just make sure that you're not doing, I wouldn't do them at the same time, but it's a, it's a really, really good, those are really good bacterias that you can give still when you're giving antibiotics and not worry. Thanks, Julie. Okay. Okay, uh, everyone. Let me just look at this really fast, chronic pneumonia. We aren't 100% sure it sure is this, but coughing with phlegm and turns to rapid breathing. The vets are at loss with him on antibiotics, which helps, but we want to take him off in warmer weather, which does seem to help. When we do, his he has diarrhea, and even with pre and probiotic, turn, which in turn results in sickness. Any recommendations on your products that could help? You're trying to give him good quality of life, huh? So, hang on, I just want to. We aren't a hundred percent sure it's this, but coughing with phlegm turns into rapid breathing. The vets are at the loss. If you have him on antibiotics, which helps, but we want to take him off in warmer weather, which does seem to help. Oh my God, Andrea's gonna kill me. But you know, the nice thing about homeopathic remedies, again, and working with a, a seasoned animal homeopath, is that you don't have to be a hundred percent sure it's it's it is like you don't have to do any more like invasive tests and things like that. Like I'm looking at this and thinking like you know ant tart and and like there's, there's so many so many remedies that can that can that can help stuff like this. And we've worked with with animals that have had chronic pneumonias and turn them right around, even old animals, you know, they may have to be on remedies long-term and, and rotate through them and stuff, but, but definitely. Um, but when I think of coughing and phlegm, I also think of gut sooth. So to try and reduce the inflammation of the mucosal lining in the lungs. So um, and acetylglucosamine is great for anything chronic in the lungs. So, you know, using N-acetylglucose, using gut sooth, using Phytos flora for the, the immune modulation, using turkey tail, using Phytosynergy um, are all really good. And if you, I would highly recommend you call Andrea though, highly, highly. And if you don't, then um, even using, you know, um, go to but oh I don't even want to say that because I can I'm just looking at this and thinking of you know 15 different remedies that I would try on them that probably would 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 help um would, would really give him good quality I, I I can't guarantee but I feel very confident to say that could help him give give him a, a, a good quality of life for sure and Danielle for you I put Andrea's contact info in the chat www.andrearing.ca for everyone listening after the event. Thank you, she says. Um, listen. And I love basset hounds. So that's why I really want you to. Aww. I they really, I mean, it doesn't matter whatever, but it's just, they're just such amazing. I love them, love them, love them. So I would really try to call her. Um, just quickly with this, this Jardia, 
yeah. thing. Um, there is a, um, there's a homeopathic, he's currently on Karnak, Planet of Flora, Libertana, Potency, three teaspoons, okay. Veggie patties, girl, okay. Flora. Um, there's a remedy you can, do we have a Jardia blog? Actually, anything, I think it was the April one. You talked about Giardia for two questions. Mm -hmm. So there's a homeopathic remedy called um, um, China, uh, Sinocha. So not Sina, but Sinocha or China. And it's been very, very, very helpful. You can, you can Google it um, and use like 30C and you can have them on it you know, two and three times a day for two times a day for, you know, even up to two weeks. Um, it's been, it's been very helpful. There's lots of, lots of stuff uh, you can, you can look for on online for using Sinocha. So not Sina, but China, Loxa or Sinocha. It's the same one. Um, great for great for uh supporting supporting that and you really want to try and build their this is a case of building their immune system so strengthening their immune system so echinacea homeopathic echinacea along with china is really really good um uh i would definitely be giving him um phytos flora and you've got not phytos flora you've got phytos for uh phytosynergy I would add phytosynergy and I would add turkey tail to that. Anything to just really, really, really support his immune system so that he can fight. He can fight. Um, he can fight this. Thank you so much, Julie. Um, okay. China is a homeopathic committee. That's for you, Vanessa. Um, and I sent the link there. Robin so, wants to know if there's a new feline product coming out. Oh boy. Yes, there is. I'm afraid so. <laughs> exciting. <laughs> a very exciting one. Yes, there it is. I know. Um, and you know, and I'm and I'm really hoping it's gonna help with with giving the specific bacteria to deal with like all the stuff that cats deal with, like like um like fur balls and IBD and things like that. So for everyone um, everyone listening, that was a little hint, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> What does it have done consults with Dr. Morgan? Do I continue to eat the same slow cooked rabbit based on the proteins? You can tell her, should I cut out all carbs, sweet rice? Continue with this current herbs. So again, this IBD, I hope she heard what I was talking about, this Ruth. Mm -hmm. um, IBD is something you want to get on top of. And there's it's something that you can homeopathically just, it's 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 just brilliant 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 so you don't want him to have ibd for a long long period of time because you know there's long-term consequences with that for sure so again i would do that with andrea until i can get my five real level and get these piece would be beneficial to have my benadryl i uh, can't really say if it's good or I'll get in trouble and then I won't be able to do any more than these lives. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm looking at the clock here, Julie, and I know you're an hour ahead yeah. of me. Um, can I give our info and wrap us up for the, the evening? Yeah. Oh my God, there's so many still, eh? I know, there's so many. I just wanna say, <clears throat> number one, Julie and I talked about something that's kind of cool um, and she's considering doing mini little drop-ins on our Facebook community here and there. It's something we're talking about. It's, uh, we're planning for it. We're, it's, it's something that'll be helpful because we noticed that there's a lot of questions that are unanswered at the end of these Ask Julie Anythings. Um, perhaps an hour isn't enough time, but you guys, if you've seen Julie's schedule, her calendar, it's, it's pretty insane. So I think, yeah, I mean, it's something that, um, that I am, I've been thinking of doing for a while is just getting on Facebook lives. Yeah. And, um, especially in like 
if you guys join the community, you have to tell them how to do it because I don't even know how to do it. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, you know, trying to trying to see if I can like once a month doing this, we always have so many questions. It's crazy. So I'm thinking that if we could maybe try doing it once a week on on a Facebook Live and see see yeah. where we get to with that. Yeah, even just for 10 minutes to hang out, pop in on the group. There's the link for everyone in the chat that isn't in our group. I know a lot of you are, I recognize your names. But um, this is Ask Julie Anything May. And I wanna thank everyone for joining us. And I apologize if we didn't get to your question. I'm telling you, Julie is an absolute machine and just really tries to get to everyone's question, but it's, it's not always possible. With that said, don't be disappointed. Don't be discouraged. We have a customer success team that will support you, pull resources, get in touch with Julie if need be. Please send your question via email if we didn't get to it tonight because we're going to help you. The email is questions at adoredbeast.com. I'll write it in the chat for everyone. Um, hold on just quickly. Just Allison. Sorry. No, I was just, she's going through chemotherapy, the dog. So, um, um, again, there are homeopathic remedies that have zero concern with contraindications with chemotherapy that can help tremendously, tremendously, like with nausea, um, with supporting the red blood cells, with the, you know, like I can just like, I, there's a million different, I worked, I had, I, we work with so many cancer patients. I can't even tell you, Allison. So um, uh, definitely, I would be looking at um, um, uh, homeopathic remedies. There's there's lots of them. Really, really lots of them. Um, but again, you know, getting hold of getting a hold of Andrea. And the best thing to do is also ask your your um, your oncologist what they think about about probiotics and if if they're okay with it, the phytosflora would really be good because it's got fulvic and humic acid in it, which helps to act like a chelation therapy. So it 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 really it really, really helps that way. But there's there and liver tonic for sure. You know, I would reach out to your oncologist, see if they're okay. I mean, <clears throat> Penn State University is doing so much research on using um, uh, different kinds of medicinal mushrooms to alleviate the side effects of chemotherapy. I think now you can actually get it as a prescription in Japan. Um, and I'm trying, I think it might be reishi that you can actually get a prescription in Japan if you're from your doctor, if you're on chemotherapy, because it, it, it's been proven now to be so supportive and helpful. So yeah, like reach out to Andrea. There are, we, we used to use specific remedies to help to alleviate the side effects of chemo and, um, ask your vet if, if, if he's okay, your oncologist, if he's okay with you using, um, medicinal mushrooms and like liver tonic and phytosynergy. I can't, I don't see a problem with it, but you always have to ask your oncologist about that. Whereas homeopathics, there's, there is no contraindication. There's, there's nothing, you don't have to worry about it. Awesome. Thank okay. you. Okay. And okay. thank you everyone that joined us tonight. All right. That's thank it. You. I'm calling it. Okay. Okay, have a good night, everyone. Thank you Bye. for your Thanks. time. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining us.